It's a bumper year for grouse in many areas. But it's not all about squandering squillions on thousand brace days. It's not easy and you're there and you're excited and you're waiting for something to happen and something gets up. I join a team of three guns shooting over pointers on a moor in Cumbria. Target is five brace, that's just ten birds. If we go over that, we'll maybe shoot one or two less tomorrow and if we don't get to five brace today, we're up to do two brace so far, just with a handful of shots now, so uh, we should get five brace, no problem. Sometimes this kind of grouse shooting goes right. And sometimes it goes wrong, with dogs pointing at where they reckon there's a grouse, then deciding it's a false alarm. Don't think of this as grouse shooting. Think of this as extreme dog walking. Donna Clark and Liz Osborne are the dog handlers today. It's the pleasure to come out and running the dogs, really. And I have to say, Liz and I are both very fortunate that we have guns that will come and pay for the pleasure of shooting over our dogs, because you know that's, that's why we have them. It's for the love of running them, really. Um, we count in the spring and the summer, and um, do the grouse counting then, and then in the shootings have a chance to run them. So. Yeah, it's a lovely day. Providing you with sport, really. Absolutely, yeah. It gives us, you know, I don't shoot myself, so therefore I'm very lucky I have a husband who does shoot. Have you always had English? Creme, creme de la creme, English, yes. They, they are, they're very aristocratic looking, aren't yeah. they? Yes, they are. Why, why do you like them? Uh, because they are. Uh, I think of the, of the three, the sort of the English setters, uh, the Irish setters and the English pointers, I think possibly they are slightly... Um, easier to tr to train, um, yes. and uh, I like the idea that when they do send the, the game birds, they do have a definite point, so you know that they're serious, and you can get to them, and then you know get your gun set up, and then slowly make your way towards the point. And I like that firm decision that the pointers give you. It's a very flat. Um point isn't it so you've got you're, you're, they're looking yeah. absolutely directly at it and, and you have yes. quite a long time don't you from when they point to well that all depends on how uh, wild the birds are if the birds are very wild they're sort of up before you've got to the uh, to the to the point um, at the beginning of the year you know after the glorious 12th birds are still in their covers they're still sitting tight so the birds on the whole the dogs have got a chance to point the birds and the birds are sitting um, as the season goes on and the weather turns a bit wild, you'll find that the, that the actual birds will be getting up before, possibly even before your, your birds, your, your dog, bird dogs will scent the, scent the birds and the birds will be away before you get to them. You know, every day's different. Rory is an Irish red and white setter who the breed has moved more towards the showing world over the last uh, sort of 10, 20 years. And the lady at Bread Rory was very keen. She had showing lines, but was very keen to get back to the working working dogs again. There's a lot of working red and whites in Ireland still, um, but there's not so many in the UK. So Rory's quite unique. He has won a novice trial in the UK, and he has gone on and shown at Crufts, and uh, won his field trial class at Crufts as well. So... Um, so he's a craft champion and a field yes, trial he's, champion. Yes, he's, he's not a field trial. No, he's a novice trial. He won a novice trial, <laughs> and he won his classic crafts. Well, I'm afraid when he went into the into the I don't know what they call it actually when they've got all the different you know age bands and so on and he's he's not he's, his stamp is a little bit different from the show variety shall we say and he's um, a red and white which is very he's unusual. nice red and white yeah I believe and I could be wrong on this but I believe the red and white's the original colour. And um, somebody at some point down the line got a predominantly red puppy and, and bred those lines and, and the red came out. So some people believe that the red and white's the original colour and the reds come from it. You'll see most of the working reds uh, pop here just a little bit. They've got a little bit of white on their chest quite often. So is, she, is she an Irish red? Yeah, she's an Irish red setter. Puppy is sitting up here at the top. She's just a young dog and still a work in progress. Yes. We hope. And her little kennel friend here is Honey the Cocker Spaniel. And Honey is something of a rescue story. She isn't is. She? She's a little foster dog we took in. Um, the family that had her, um, their personal circumstances changed and they could no longer keep the dog. So she came to live with us. She's working bred but has never done a working job at all. So this is her first day out being a working dog. And I don't think she wants to go back to suburbia now. <laughs> she did her first retrieve today. Didn't she? she did indeed, yes, I think. She was slightly surprised to find a dead bird in the heather, but she brought it back beautifully. Um, the only other uh, 
quarry, shall we say, she's brought me a big rat the other day that the cat had obviously killed. So I thought, well, there's obviously something in here. <laughs> enter to rats and enter to cats. Yes, absolutely. So she's done fur and feather now. So. <laughs> By lunchtime, the man who lets the sport here, Robert Benson, says what he thinks of the show so far. Well, I think we've got two and a half brace, which uh, I'm very pleased with. We've actually been on a bit of moorland that we very rarely shoot. So to have a quiet you know, walk round with, with the uh, pointers and so on, it's been a great fun morning. And uh, a little bit more to look forward to this afternoon? Yes, we're going to go on to the main moor this afternoon. Uh, we'll see a l quite a lot more grouse, I hope. Uh, and certainly they should get a chance of a shot or two. So that was just a curtain raiser? Absolutely. <laughs> um, how long have you been uh, looking after uh, this estate? I've been here for 33 years. Um, I came, came here in the, in the mid-70s, been here ever since, uh, looking after the sporting side of the whole estate, uh, which is not just grouse. We do um, partridges on the edge of the moor, a lot of stalking, both red and row. I think a lot of people don't realise you can do highland red stalking in this sort of scenery here on the edge of the Lake District. What we don't do nowadays is a, is a large-scale pheasant shoot. This has been an, I mean, an outstanding year for grouse in some places. How, is it, how have you fared here in Cumbria? Well, I think we've done reasonably well. Time, time will still tell. We haven't driven the main moor yet. Um, as you know, we had a very, very hard winter with feet of snow. Uh, a lot of grouse moved off the hill, um, completely off the hill, and I think we were very concerned what was going to happen to them. It seems to be that, that basically they've come back, um, the, the hard winter has taken out the old, the weak, the, um, and so on. So it's actually done a very good job of, of culling um, particularly those with a high worm count. The worm counts are low. Uh, the hens, I think, were, were late to, to nest. That may be something to do with the fact that the heather was very late, which is a knock-on effect from the, the hard winter, and maybe not quite in peak condition. So brood sizes look as though in this part of the world they may be down. But basically having a very healthy stock of grouse is the best thing you can have. And this is a repeat of the um, 63 uh, uh, grouse season following on the 1962-63 winter which was just about the hardest on record that most people can remember. How many, how many acres do you, do you keep it here? Uh, I would think overall it's probably in the region of about 16,000 acres but uh, the main heather area is probably about five. And so it's made up of, sort of forestry and white ground. And grouse is your, your staple really is it? Yeah and a few partridges yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, do you do a lot of days like this one? Uh, we do several, it just rather depends on what uh, the stock of grouse is, but uh, you know, usually about four or five days, something like that, something in that region. And Cumbria is not uh, instantly known for, for big driven days, is it? But no, the only, the only, there are one or two moors that are on the sort of Cumbria border when you get over into Durham and North Yorkshire that uh, do have uh, quite good days most years, but generally speaking, there's very very few grouse moors in Cumbria and the Lake District itself. With the glorious Lake District on one side and the Pennines on the other, it's a beautiful place to spend a hot August day. And the 70th anniversary of the Battle of Britain means there are some bigger birds in the air too. Back to the birds in hand, there's more action after lunch. Was it all about the dead grouse? I ask one of the guns, Andy Richardson. A reasonably successful day. Um, is it true you got two birds with one shot? I actually did. <laughs> yes. Isn't that? I mean, that's slightly overrating it because you're only here for five brace, and so you get one of the brace. That's great. But I did miss two easy birds this morning, so. <laughs> so you're feeling a bit redeemed now. That's right. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah. Now I've asked I asked Donna and I asked Liz, is it really all about the dogs or is it about the guns or is it a bit of a mixture? For me, seeing the dogs working and seeing the keepers kind of a, the smile on the faces when we are actually shooting. That that's the big thing. That the shooting at the end of the day it is part of it and possibly for for some of these guys, it's a bigger part than it would be for myself. Uh, I've just got the love of being out here. Now, you, it, you must hold them up for the, for, the, for the folks back home. They'll be able to look at that. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. That's an old one, by the look of it, and that's a young one. That's correct. Yep. So, old a, hen and a young hen. A good mixture. 
Wonderful. They are the king of birds, aren't they? With that last double from Andy, that's the ten brace accounted for. Time to leave Cumbria and a team of happy guns and dogs.